the band. The band. Welcome, welcome. Uh, this is a. This is going to be an amazing evening, and I'd like to introduce myself. My name's Ken. Um, I'm not your host. I'm just the oldest guy, and I have to be on first because I go to bed early. <laughs> I know I'm old because I pick my doctors by the thickness of their fingers. I like how uncomfortable you are with that. That's good. That's good. Because I'm at that age where I just look at kids today and shake my head. Kids today are eating Tide Pods. You know, my generation, if I ever had the inkling to taste detergent, I just swore in front of my grandma. <laughs> And I'd have a red mark on my face, and I'd fart bubbles for a week. <laughs> Quick and easy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I know I'm old. Young comics don't want to go on the road with me, because uh, when I drive, I listen to CBC. <laughs> yeah, why? Because I'm old. I want to learn something. You know what I learned to drive today? Geese mate for life. Did you know that? This is not television. You can answer me. Yes. Yeah, because it makes sense to me. Because usually I see two geese flying. The front goose has got to be the male. Well, they don't have parts, so you can't tell. I assume, because if I see two geese flying, the front goose is always aerodynamic behind it is the female. Every time. Second one is always Ah, you're with your spouses. You can't laugh. Because you know what she's saying. How come we left so late? Maybe you should get a road map. Maybe we should go to Costco. See, I'm a goose whisperer. I can read his mind. He's sitting there going, there's got to be a hunter around here somewhere. I like to groan. See, the band knows when to groan. Because everybody has, young kids today, they have a saying for, for my generation. It's called OK Boomer. <laughs> OK Boomer is supposed to be an insult to me. Uh-uh. That means I was raised by World War II vets. <laughs> that means I had discipline. I never went on public wearing pajamas. <laughs> For two reasons. Number one, we never had a Walmart. <laughs> oh, girl, it's great. Number two, <laughs> number two, is we had the mom. You'd sit there and go, Mom, I don't know where my pajamas. Your mom would look at you and go, Stop your crying, or I'll give you something to cry about. Yeah, that's, yeah, well, you know, that's something to cry about. That's, and, and, and that's, and you'd sit there and go, Come on, Mom, I want to wear my pajamas. And she'd look at you and go, you, I don't want you going out in public looking like a hobo. Now go get your purple flares for going. <laughs> Because World War II vets had all those great saves. Whole nine yards, that's all the bullets in the Spitfire. They were all used. My mom would look at a kid misbehaving and go, that mom should have ate that kid while the bones were still soft. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to behave. I'm going to behave. That's going to be the way it is. Oh, yes. And it sounded weird. Like, this room is so small you can't swing a cat. What type of a measuring device is that? <laughs> You're a carpenter. You come in and go, she wants a new kitchen. She wants it bigger. Get fluffy. <laughs> that's, that's the stuff I can't figure out. But you know what? It was great being raised by World War II vets. You know how my mom vaccinated me? She took me to the spotted kid's house. <laughs> I'll wait for you old people to figure that one out. The next day I went to Gopher Boy's house and I had all the diseases before I went to school. Yes. I made the first video game. Yeah, early 60s. We found a hornet's nest inside of a pallet. And the two of us got a metal bar, because that's what we played with in those days. And I shoved the metal bar into the hornet's nest and both of us, and we stripped down to just our short pants, early 60s short pants. We took off our running shoes because Allie's had pebbles and really sharp. We shoved it in there, we had 15 Mississippis. And then we ran. And then we counted bites. And whoever had the least number of bites won. 
And then we ate peanut butter and nobody died. <laughs> and then we took gluten and poured it all over our bodies. Because we didn't blame a poo on a bad loaf of bread. And then we went to A&W and had hormone in our beef. We had Alberta beef. None of this New Zealand non-hormone beef. We had Alberta beef with hormones. I want to bite into that burger and taste the pipeline being built. <laughs> I'm 67 years old. I want hormones in my beef because I'm going to be in a senior's home soon and I want to grow breasts so I have something to do while I'm in there. <laughs> and they say they don't have antibiotics. Get some! If your chicken has chlamydia, I want it cleared up before I'm eating the eggs, okay? And if you're a vegetarian, good for you. Yeah, you don't get a burger. No, none of this Beyond Meat stuff. You don't see me getting bacon and dyeing it green and going, look, a Beyond Salad. <laughs> yeah, grown, but we're changing. We're banging the kids too much. We don't allow them to get zeros in schools anymore. We just, we just, like, like, I was in a restaurant, and it's usually, it's not the kids' fault, it's the parents, there's some spineless parents. And it's usually the shh, mom, the shh, the shh, don't run, shh. And you're in a restaurant, and there's kids running. And you look over, here's mom, do something. Nothing happens, that's when I tripped the kid. <laughs> <coughs> the kid's laying there crying, I go, that's why you don't run. You just got your first zero from Mr. V. And next time your mom goes, shh, say it after it. Because I was in a crowded restaurant. And it was, it was crowded. It was, and this kid's running. And the mom catches the kid at the other end. And I go, there's a good parent. Talking to their child, giving consequences for the action. Talking to the child. Gets up, the kid fucking runs again. Catches the kid right here. I get to hear it. Honey. Honey, mommy said not to run. No, no, no. Mommy said not to run. Do you want a dinosaur? So she's going to reinforce bad behavior by buying the child something. My mom, World War II vet, very similar. She picked me up, looked me in the eyes, and go, whatever you, do you want to die in this store? <laughs> Same thing. But we're protecting kids, and I love it. I love the stop signs in the back, but some people in here, I mean, I'm sorry, there's, there's a lot of stupid people in this world, but we're protecting them. And some of you are part of the problem, occupational health and safety. You're preventing stupid people from dying on the job where they should. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to laugh at that one. Remember the good old days we sent stupid people to the rigs up north and they never came back. We never locked our trucks in the farm. We had. We had rural crime watch because we didn't have crime, we'd watch it if it happened. But oh no, and occupational health and safety has hit all of our lives. Here's one, seat belts on shopping carts, in case your kid falls out in Sioux. If your kid falls out of a shopping cart, I don't want their genetic information passed on. Wasn't that the best part of shopping with your mom, was hanging from the outside of the cart? And she went down the aisle with cereal. He went, I want Cocoa Puffs. I want Cocoa Puffs. And your mom said, no. Once. And you shut up, didn't you? <laughs> you remember the time you didn't shut up? She left a buggy full of groceries right here. Bare bum spanked you through dairy. Put you in the car with a dog at 35 degrees. And police didn't break windows in those days. The police just walked by and went, that little bastard deserves it. <laughs> and I didn't swear there. I quoted the police officer. Because the police officer looked at this car. And there was kids in there with Hawkins Cheesies and Orange Crush. And he goes, there's good parents. They're in the bar. Oh, I love, I love them.